So I just want to continue today with my, my sermon on the glory of God. I'm really excited about it. I've really been getting into it. I've been really reading it and rereading it and rereading it. And I just want to encourage you guys to continue. Pastor Gigi talked last week about the glory of God. She talked last week about how we're, God, we're glory carriers. The glory of God is in our hearts and in our spirits. And when we walk and when we and, and when we walk in our lives, we're carrying the glory of God in our spirits. And when where 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 we go, He goes. What we proclaim, He does, as long as it's, it's according to His word. We are the carriers of the Almighty Living God. We are the carriers of the Great Creator of the universe. Everything that He is, He's made available to us. And it's available to us because that's the way he wanted it. He set the plan up. He wanted, he wanted to be a part of our lives. And when the, when the glory fell in the, in, the, in, a, in the Pentecost and the tongues were spoken, the glory of God fell. And that was, the most, that was such an exciting day that we were able to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And we can use it on a daily basis to enrich ourselves and to pray mysteries and to pray secrets, and to connect with God on a, on a supernatural level, and I'm just so excited. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm so excited I speak in tongues. I'm so excited I'm saved. I'm so excited that I can take the glory and the power of God into the negative death-dealing situations of life and change those things. Those things can be changed through my prayers. Those things can be changed through my, my authority that I've been given on this earth. I'm a king. I'm a priest. I have been given authority by God himself to make changes on this earth, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to make changes. So I'm going to read Acts 7 and 55. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The first martyr of the church was Stephen. He looked up steadfast, and he saw the glory of God. Can you see the glory? Most certainly you can. In the Old Testament, they saw the glory a lot. It was a common occurrence, as a matter of fact. In Isaiah 35, 1 and 2, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will blur, blur, burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. Here we go. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of God and the splendor of God. What, what does that mean? The creation, the very creation of the earth, the very creation of the universe are the glory of God. When you get up in the morning and you look out your window, and you see the beautiful blue sky, and you see the clouds, and you see the stars at night, and you see the wonderful, amazing flowers that God's created for us, and the air he's created us to breathe, and the uniqueness and the, the specialness of our creations as human beings, they reveal the glory of God. Life itself reveals the glory of God to all of his creation. The glory of God. I am a unique. There is no one like me in the earth. There'll never be another Terry Hagan ever again. I'm unique. I'm special to God. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not worse than anybody else, but I am special to God. Isaiah 61 through 2. Arise from the circumstance which have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of God, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That's for you. The glory of God should be radiant on your face. The glory of the Lord should be radiant in your life because the glory of God lives within each one of our spirits. Praise God. For darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. I want God's glory to be seen upon me wherever I go. I want God's glory to be seen upon me when I go to Costco and I get a piece of pizza. I want people to look at me and say there's something different about that guy. I want the glory of God to be seen upon me 
when I go to the gas station and I pump gas and someone talks to me and I give them a God bless you, God loves you, God, I've done that so many times, God bless you, thank you so much. And they turn around and their jaws drop because they're not used to someone saying, God bless you. Thank you, God. I want the glory of God and the grace of God and the power of God to be seen on my, on my face, wherever I go, whatever I do. I want to talk about Ezekiel 128 through 20, 126 to 28. For what had the appearance of his waist upward, I saw a luster as it were glowing metal with the appearance of fire enclosed around within it. And from his appearance of his waist downward, as I saw, it was the appearance of fire, and there was a brightness around him. Like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. The glory of God can be seen as fire. The glory of God can be seen as fire. Pastor Gigi taught a message a couple months ago on the fire of God. The glory, one of the manifestations of the glory of God is you see the fire of God. Praise God. Ezekiel 8, 2 through 4, it happened again. And beheld the likeness of a man with the appearance of fire from his waist downward. He was like fire. And from his waist upward, he had the appearance of brightness like gleaming bronze. And behold, there was the glory of the God of Israel who had chosen them like the vision I saw in the plain. And look and behold in the firmament that was over the heads of the cherubim as they peered above them looking like a sapphire stone. And the Lord spoke to the man clothed in linen and said, go in among the whirling wheels among the cherub and the glory of God mounted up from the cherubim to stand over the threshold of the Lord's house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was filled with the brightness of the Lord's glory. Now, I'll tell you a little story. I got a couple of glory stories that happened to me personally, so I'm really excited. So here's one of my glory stories. Now, before I get started, I want you to say, Terry, I'm listening. I'm listening. I want you to get what I'm saying. I don't want you to try to do what I, what happened to me because I didn't try to do it. It just happened. But I don't want you to do, I don't want you to go about trying to do what I did. So I pray in tongues all the time. I pray in tongues at night, I pray in tongues during the day, I pray in tongues when I'm going to the store quietly, and I'm praying in tongues. And this has only happened to me one time, so I get excited. So I'm driving in my car, and I just I turn off the radio, and I said, well, I've got time in my car. So I'm just going to pray in tongues from, from now until the time when I get home. So I'm praying in tongues, I'm praying in tongues, I'm praying in tongues, and I'm going over this hill close to my house, there's a house close to the hill. I've been praying in tongues probably for 20, 25 minutes. And I'm praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, I'm praying in tongues. And this is what happened. God's my witness and on the Bible. I'm praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, the, my car starts to get smoky inside my car. It starts to get smoky in my car. And, and the, the front windshield wasn't smoky. But I'm looking around, and I thought, there's something wrong with my eyes. There's something wrong with my eyes. Why is, why is, my, the, the, why is the... Why is the inside of the car looking like smoke? But the front windshield, I can see perfectly clear through the front windshield. And I was praying in tongues, and all of a sudden, this peace that passes all understanding came into the car. And it was just this heaviness, this heaviness when I was driving, this peace when I was driving, this back, as I look backwards, I could see the, 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 this like cloud, this like smoke, this like peace in the back seat of the car but it wasn't coming to the part of the car where i was driving so i was totally safe and as i was praying in tongues i thought ooh 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 i thought about i thought like Gigi, oh this is cool <laughs> this is cool so as, as i drove i was going up the hill i was praying in tongues and i thought wow this is like amazing i looked to the back and it was kind of smoky and i looked forward it wasn't smoky and the peace was there and this heaviness was coming upon my head as i'm driving and I thought, oh, this is really, really cool. And as soon as I got out of my spirit, into my mind, into my head thinking, it went away. It went away. But it, it, it was so much fun to have that happen to me that I want it to happen again. But you can't make these things happen. These things happen only by the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
these things only I want listen if I could drive my car every time I get in my car and and I'm driving and there's no cars around me and I'm on the freeway and that cloud comes back into the car and I can still see I want that every time <laughs> I want that every time. I only have one time. One time, I never tried to do it again. It came out of nowhere. It, it left just like that. But for those 30 or 40 seconds or 50 seconds, it was fantastic. It was great. <laughs> it was heavy. It was cloudy. It was smoky. I could see out of the front of my car and it was peaceful. And I went home and I, I like Pastor Gigi said last week, um, it, I couldn't think a negative thought for a couple days after that happened to me. When Pastor Gigi said that, I thought to myself, that's happened to me. I had trouble. I actually tried to think negative thoughts and I couldn't even think a negative thought. It was so much fun. So I can't wait to get to heaven because that's what heaven's going to be like. Praise God. So that's one of my, I got another story to tell you in a little bit, but I just wanted to just, um, to just go a little bit forward here. I want to talk to you about some stories of the glory in the New Testament. Okay, praise God. Matthew 7, 1 through 7. And six days after this, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And his appearance, whose appearance? Jesus' appearance, underwent a change in their presence, and his face shone clear and bright like the sun, and his clothing became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, who kept talking with him. And then Peter began to speak and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good and delightful that we are here. If you approve, I will put three booths here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a shining cloud composed of light overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am and have always been delighted listen to him. Luke 2 through 9, the chapter with the shepherds. And she gave birth to her son, her firstborn, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room or place for them in the inn. And in that vicinity, there were shepherds living out under the open sky in the field, watching in shifts over the flock of by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. Praise God. Jesus' birth was surrounded by the glory, the manifest presence the visible presence, the Shekinah glory of the almighty God himself. The cloud was there. The flashing was there. The everything was there. I'm excited. I'm, 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 I don't know what to say. I'm so excited. Luke 9, 29 through 34. Now about eight days after these teachings, Jesus took Peter and John up to the mountain to pray. This is another account. As he was praying, the appearance of his countenance became altered different and his clothes became dazzling white flashing with the brilliance of the lightning and the glory of God who appeared in splendor and majesty and brightness and were speaking of his exit from life which he was about to bring to the realization at Jerusalem and Peter and those with him were weighed down but when they fully awoke again they saw his glory his splendor his majesty and his brightness and the two men that stood with him. <sighs> Praise God. Acts 9, 1 through 4. Meanwhile, Saul, still drawing breath hard from the threatening and the murderous desire against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and requested of him letters to the synagogue of Damascus, authorizing him that if he found any man or woman belonging to the way of life, as determined by faith in Jesus Christ, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he traveled on, he came to Damascus. And here we go. Paul was going to kill Christians. Paul was going to imprison Christians. As he traveled on, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Light from heaven shined. 
Paul was a Jew. He was highly educated. And this is what the Lord spoke to me when I was praying this message about Paul. Paul knew the Old Testament. Paul knew about all the instances in the Old Testament where the Shekinah glory of God came as a cloud, where the Shekinah glory of God came as fire, when the Shekinah glory of God manifested himself in the desert as a pillar of fire and a cloud with the men, with the men and women of the nation of Israel. Paul knew that. When this glory hit Paul, he knew what, he, what was happening to him. And he replied, who are you, Lord? And, the, and, and he said to me, I am Jesus the Nazarene, whom you are persecuting. And this is Paul giving his testimony. And since I could not see because of the dazzling, glorious intensity of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand to those who were with me. And then I arrived in Damascus. Romans 8 through 11 talks about it too. We were, we were buried there far with him in the baptism unto death. It was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father that we too. Again, has a couple stories about the glory of God that he taught us when he was at Rama. One story that he talked about. He was just a boy preacher in Texas, and the first time this ever happened to him while he was preaching. Brother Hagin was preaching away, just giving a normal Sunday message, and he said for the first time he saw this glory cloud come into the church. He said it came from the back of the room, and it came in waves closer and closer and closer and closer to him, and he saw, he saw the cloud coming in. And he didn't know how far the cloud was going to come, but he knew that it was something was happening that he could see that nobody else could see. He said the cloud filled the back of the church and filled the, the, the people one by one by one row as it got closer to him. He said that when the cloud came over him, he could not hear what he was saying, but he was still preaching. Isn't that amazing? He was preaching away while the, he was inside the cloud of the Shekinah manifest glory of God. He said that he had his watch on the pulpit and he looked down. He could not see the watch on the pulpit. He could not see the pulpit. He could not see anybody that he was preaching to. All he could see was flashings, fire, glory, light, brightness, smoke, all the different manifestations of the power of God. As, they, as the glory of God completely filled that church, he could not hear what he was speaking, but he was still talking. He said, then the glory of God slowly manifested itself and went back the same way that it came. And he said that as, as he was speaking, slowly he could look down. He could see a little bit around him. He could see a little bit of the pulpit. He could see a little bit of his watch. And as he kept speaking, the glory of God can, then manifested itself as it left the room and disappeared out of the back of the room. And he said that he was in the glory cloud, according to his watch, for 17 minutes, and he didn't know a thing about what he said. Manifestation of the glorious presence of God. When it was over, he asked someone that he was staying with, his name was R.O. Cox, he was one of the elders of the church, and he said, did anything happen to me? Is there anything different about what I was preaching those last 15 minutes of the service? And R.O. Cox said, everybody in town's talking about it. Everybody in town's talking about what happened in the church service. Your face shone like an angel. We couldn't even look upon your face while you were preaching. We all had to look down because we couldn't look your face shone like an angel. Isn't that amazing? Just like Moses in the cloud, when, he, when Brother Hagin was in the cloud. Another story that he told us that was really interesting was <clears throat> he was doing street preaching. He had a car. And he, had a, he, drive, he would drive his car around the little town, and he would have a loudspeaker, and the loudspeaker would say, I'm going to be preaching on Japan is going to lose the war. Japan is going to lose the war. So everybody got excited about that. And Brother Hagin said, how did I know? Brother Hagin said, you know, how did I know that Japan was going to lose the war? And um, 
the, and he said, the Lord told me that Japan was going to lose the war. So that's what I went around and preached. So he got on the street. He had a little mic. He had a little boom box, or maybe he was just preaching with his voice. He got on the street corner and he started preaching. He said, as he was preaching the service outside in the crowd, there was hundreds of people listening to him. And he said, the glory began to manifest itself outside and covered the people that he was speaking to and came like a wave and covered him again. And he said he was preaching for nearly one hour on the street, preaching in the glory cloud where he couldn't see. And he said, slowly when the glory began to lift and he began to manifest itself, he didn't know a thing about what he was preaching. As the glory manifested itself, he said people were on their knees in front of him asking to be saved and they were throwing money on the street around him. He said the manifestation of the glory of God was so strong that he didn't even have to give an altar call. People just begged to be saved because the glory and the manifestation of God was so strong in that, in that thing. One more story, then I'll finish. about another, another Kenneth Hagin story about the glory. Kenneth Hagin was preaching in a healing school one time. Pastor Brad, Pastor Gigi, and I went to Ramah. We were uh, going to healing school a lot. And Keith Moore, who was a preacher uh, for Brother Hagen, now, now is an international minister. At the time, he was doing healing school. But prior to that, for 19 years, Brother Hagen ran healing school during the day. And there was one time he was preaching in healing school. And all of a sudden, just like Brother Hagen says, you can't predict these things. You can't wish these things to happen. They happen, as, they happen at the will of the Holy Spirit. They happen at the will of God. He said, suddenly, as he was just preaching away on a topic, he saw the glory cloud. He said the glory cloud at this time did not cover the people. It came at the top of the room, and it was like a cloud on the top of the room, and it moved forward, but you could still see the people as he was preaching. So Brother Hagen said he didn't know what was going to happen, but he knew that if the glory cloud was going to cover him for some reason, he said he knew that if the glory cloud was going to come on him, then he would fall over. So he was preparing himself for that. Why he didn't follow the other times, I don't know. But he said this time he knew that if the glory cloud touched him, he would not be able to stand up. But he said the glory cloud stopped right in front of the pulpit, and it, it was coming down like between three and four feet of the top of the ceiling to the very, uh, uh, just over the heads of the people who he was preaching to. And there's another lady there, Patsy Caminetti was there, and then Keith Moore was doing the music for the um, healing school at the time. Brother Hagen said, the Lord spoke to him and said, if anyone is, is in dying condition, reach up into the, he said, the glory's here, the glory's here. Whether you can see it or not, the glory cloud is here. Reach up and take what you need, say it's mine and you'll be healed. So this lady had a tube in her nose and she, was, she had terminal cancer. And she also had uh, a situation where they tried to cut the cancer out of her esophagus and they made a mistake and they cut her esophagus and they did 13 operations on her neck trying to get her to swallow because she couldn't swallow. Brother Hagin said she, she, she told him this afterward. So Brother Hagin said he saw this woman who had a no, uh, uh, oxygen going through her nose. She pulled the oxygen down. She reached up. He saw her say, it's mine, it's mine, I take it now. She put her hand down. She sat down. And at, at the end of the meeting, she went across the street and she ate two Mexican dinners. <laughs> Brother Hagen said, she must have been healed. She hadn't had a bite of solid food for 18 months. She went across the street. She had two Mexican dinners. She came back. She told Brother Hagen, this is what happened yesterday. Brother Hagen said, Brother Hagen said, are you healed? And she says, I'm healed. She got healed of terminal cancer. She got healed of uh, a soft, uh, uh, an air and an esophagus surgery and she was healed and she he said she, he saw her 10 years later she gained her weight back she was totally healed she was totally well so that's three illustrations of the manifest presence of God in a church meeting why am I saying this because I'm preaching on the glory of God because I want to see manifest presence of the power and the glory of God at Victory Church I want to see, I wanted to experience these things. I want to, to have these things happen. And I just, I mean, I'm so excited because I know that God is not a respecter of persons. 
we desire these things. We want these things to manifest us. We want healings to go forth in our, in our church services. We want the manifest power of the glory of God to manifest himself. While Pastor Brad is teaching in Pakistan, we want Pastor Brad and the Church of Victory Church to, to be a part of these crusades that when Pastor Brad is preaching, the anointing of God comes through those that crowd and the cloud of God comes across and the fire of God manifests itself in that crowd. So hundreds are healed, hundreds are saved. And, and the power of the message that Pastor Brad preaches in Pakistan and when he goes to Thailand and when they go to Brazil, that they will say, this man carries the glory of God. This woman carries the glory of God with them. There, there's something about them that's different. There's something about them that, that the power of God manifests and rests itself upon their lives so that when they go on mission trips, that they're, they're not like everyone else. They know the glory of God. They've heard about the glory of God. They're expecting the glory of God. They're, they're welcoming the glory of God to come in their midst. And the power will manifest itself through their speaking, through their teaching, and through their ministry. We just believe that. We believe that in Jesus' name. So I want to just give you one more story. I'm going to kind of read this, and I'm going to be done. It's about Catherine Kuhlman and her death. It's about Catherine Kuhlman when she, the presence of God manifested itself through a smell with the glory of God. I'm just going to read this. On the day that she died, 8.20 p.m. on Friday 20th, 1976, something unusual happened. It was said that the Holy Spirit descended upon her one more time and her face began to shine. When Catherine Kuhlman went home to be with Jesus in 1976, the power of God and the glory of God went through the hospital. What happened? Her organs were failing except for her heart. She never went into an irregular heartbeat. Generally what happens before you die, your heart goes into an irregular heartbeat and then you go. Catherine Kuhlman never did that. She was gone in the blink of an eye. The last nurse who saw Catherine Kuhlman alive before her death said her final request was this. I shall die February 20th. This is the nurse now, a non-Christian. I shall die on February 20th at 1.13 a.m. Please only have roses at my funeral. Within 15 minutes of Catherine Kuhlman's final request, a new nurse was just starting her first day on the job went to Catherine Kuhlman's room and wanted to take her pulse. She noticed that Catherine Kuhlman was not cold, Catherine Kuhlman was not warm, and the air in her room was thick with the fragrance of roses, not just a few roses, but millions of roses. The head ICU nurse arrived to chart the time of Catherine Kuhlman's death, but both the young nurse and the ICU head nurse could hardly stand up when they were going into her room. They, were, they could hardly stand up because the presence and the power and the glory of God were so strong in her room. They began to chart notes for the last final request. They saw an exact date and time given by Catherine Kuhlman and her final words gave the testimony to Jesus. The nurse said the very last breath taken on earth as she entered God's glory were, I love, I love, I love Jesus. When they went in, the nurses went in to document Catherine Kuhlman's death. The new nurse and the head ICU nurse were unbelievers. But in the presence of God, they immediately began to cry and could hardly stand up due to the glory of God being so strong. At the very moment, one of the nurses dropped into a chair, weeping as she gave her life to the Lord in the glory. Praise God. The glory of God can be seen, felt, and smelled. The glory of God was so strong, according to this testimony, in the hospital, that the glory of God and the power of the smell of the roses was so strong on that floor that the, one of the nurses that was the administrator came into the room and talked to the nurse and said, there's no roses allowed in the, in the emergency room. There's no roses allowed in the ICU. And the one nurse that got saved said, she don't, we don't have any roses in here. That's the power of God, evidently, because the roses were so strong. Praise God. Moses said, now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. 
the last thing I want to say is this. When Moses asked to see the glory of God on the mountain, what did God say? I will allow you to see my goodness. I will allow you to see my goodness. It is the glory of God. It is the goodness of God that is his glory. It is the goodness of God that is his glory. If God could have said, I'm this, I'm that. When Moses asked to see the glory of God, God said, I want to show you my goodness. My goodness. God is good. God is always good. God always wants to reveal his goodness and his mercy and his love and his kindness and his joy and his peace. All the aspects that God wants to show us are all part of his glory. Amen. All part of his glory. It's so amazing that we have the opportunity because we know God personally. We've seen the things that he's done for us in our lives. That what Pastor Gigi said by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit before we started this message is that we carry the goodness of God in our lives we carry the goodness of God to share with people as the love that shines through our eyes and spoken through our lips to people who are desperate, who are lonely, who are confused, who don't have any of the answers, that we can bring those answers to them, that we can provide what they need. So before I now when I close, I just want to give an altar call. Like, like I think Mark asked me to do that. So I just I just say, anyone here who doesn't know the Lord. Anyone here who's listening to this message on YouTube or, or um, wherever else Jasmine has put them, I just want to say, God is a good God. God loves you. Jesus loves you. He provided salvation for you. He made the way possible for you to receive the goodness of God and salvation. And I just encourage you today that if you don't know the Lord, if you don't know Jesus, if you've thought that Jesus is wishy-washy and if it's God's will to heal you, he'll heal you. And if it's God's will to save you, he'll save you. If it's God's will to love you, he'll love you. If it's not God's will to love you, he won't know. God loves you with an everlasting love. God saved you. 2,000 years ago, Jesus pro provided everything that you need for salvation. So if you're just right there in your room or you're listening to it to somewhere, I encourage you now, just say, Jesus, I've heard the message. I believe that you're a good God. I believe that you're a God of salvation. I believe that you're a God of healing. I believe that you're a God of glory. I accept you into my life. I want you into my life. I repent of my sins. And I say, Father, I want you as my own personal Savior now today. And I thank you for this. And I thank you for your glory. And I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.